So I got, I got a few verses I want to give you this morning. So if you open up, uh, the first place I really want to start is Joshua chapter 14. In Joshua chapter 14, and we, of course we just had a 9 o'clock service, and uh, I didn't read any of this, but while I was standing there, the Lord wanted me to start in Joshua chapter 14. So I'm going to start there, because there's a passage, there's a, a, a line there that I want you guys to get this morning, because this morning we're talking about uh, being a believer Everybody say, I'm a believer. believer. Let me all know not all Christians are believers. In other words, you can be a believer in the cross and be a believer in eternity and all that, and that will get you over into eternal life. But how many of y'all know you can believe beyond just eternal life? In other words, God wants there to be some signs that follow you as a believer. So I want to look at some of those signs this morning, but the Lord just reminded me of of Joshua chapter chapter 14, and I'll read it in the New King James Version. It says, The children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and the Kenizzites said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to Gadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And if you remember this story, God said, hey, I've got something for you. And, and uh, Moses sent 12 spies into this land that God had for them so that they could spy out the land and see what kind of land that it actually was. And the 12 spies that went out, they looked at the land, and they came back, and they told Moses and told everybody, they said, Bro. they said this land, it's, it's unbelievable. The dirt is different than other dirt. You know, some dirt they would dig forever, and there's just no water there. The water table was so low, and it's sandy. And, and I've actually been over there. If you've ever been to Israel, it's amazing because you're in the middle of really what is a desert, an absolute desert. If you go to Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, all those places, whenever you're flying into Israel, there's just desert. But in Jerusalem and in Israel, it's the most lush. There's avocados and dates and pomegranates and olive vineyards I mean it's it's unbelievable that that land is in the middle of what just seems like a wasteland but whenever you fly into it you actually see that that land is unbelievable and you we rented a car and we did a missions trip Brent was there and some of us you ride around and it's just like palm tree after I mean it's just lush and you're just like man this is fascinating that it's so nice so you can imagine these 12 spies, they go into this land, and they come back and they tell Moses, they said, this land right here, baby, it's different. Like, it's just a different kind of land. It's a land that's flowing with milk and honey. And the fruit there are large and in charge, baby. This is, I mean, it's, it's succulent uh, property over there. It's unbelievable. But then they said, but there's a problem. There's giants in the land. And as good as it is, we can't possess it. We can't. There's no way. And, and if you know the story of David and Goliath, you know, Goliath, they estimate be, to be between 9 and 13 feet tall. And uh, I am a uh, very generous 5'6". <laughs> so you can imagine, if, if you took me and stood me on top of me, then you would have uh, Goliath. So, I mean, you can imagine if there was a nation of giants And then you have a bunch of little Jewish people like myself. Uh, It seems overwhelming. And it's like, I mean, whenever they talk about the weight of Goliath's spear and the weight of his shield. I mean, just the the anatomy of these people. Totally, it's unbelievable. And and so 12 of these spies come back and 10 of them say, you know, as, as great as the land is, don't even think about it, baby. That there is no way that we're going to have any part of this land. And they actually said, we're like grasshoppers. They're going to mush us like bugs. Now, grasshoppers to them uh, are to what roaches are to us. Because grasshoppers would eat up their their crops and stuff. How many of y'all like a good roach? I saw yesterday, and I sent it to Ansley because Ansley does youth here. uh, And it was like this clip on like some youth games you can do. So they took a clear tube. And they put a live roach in the clear tube. And they put a teenager on each end of it with the tube in their mouth. 
and they had to blow the roach to see which one could keep. How many of y'all remember a good Christian youth group? <laughs> Listen, that's what's wrong with the church today is the youth group of America is putting roaches in people. In the, so you watch these two boys, and they're going, and they're blowing, and the poor little roach is like, he's looking for the dark spot, and it's in their throat, you know. So it's, anyway, so I mean, uh, to, to them, grasshoppers are a very bad thing, right? So to us, roaches are a very bad thing. But, but they said, man, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way that we're going to be able to possess this land. But Joshua and Caleb, they had a, the Bible calls it a different spirit. That what they had in them was just different than the other ten people. That they had a different, they had a, just a different spirit in them. And really this morning what I'm talking about being a believer, believers have a different spirit. All twelve of them may have been followers of God, but two out of the twelve were believers. Two out of the 12 believe all things are possible. Greater is he that's in us, and it don't matter if they're 40 feet tall. If God, us plus God is more than enough. If he can split the Red Sea, and if he can give us a cloud by day and fire by night and rain manna from heaven, if he can, if he can send quail in, then anything is absolutely possible. And what I'm talking about is all across the globe, there's Christians, but there's not believers. And God needs there to be some believers, people that just believe to the uttermost, God can save to the uttermost. And there's a lot of good Christian people, and I think that's amazing. And all of us have to start there in good morals and good character and all that. But there's got to be a remnant. There's got to be somebody that, that's a believer that just says, you know, I, don't, I know that it looks like the chips are down, and I know it looks like they're 13 feet tall, and we can't even pick up their sword in our own strength. But I believe David had a different spirit. I mean, I know he had a different spirit when he ran at Goliath. He just had something that his brothers didn't have. And you're, I, I, I believe I'm talking to people that have something that your other brothers just don't have. Your other sisters may not have. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. And I'll show you some scriptures here of some others that weren't there. But at least they had the, the enough sense to say, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief that this is an area that I'm not strong in. Help my unbelief. I don't want to die an unbeliever. Help my unbelief. Because these two boys, Joshua and Caleb, they just said, let us go up at once and possess the land. They said, it doesn't matter how big they are. God said, it's ours. Let's go get it. And I know it's occupied by the enemy right now. But the enemy doesn't, have a, doesn't stand a chance if Jehovah's on our side. And so Joshua now, he's testifying, and, and he's, they've crossed over into the promised land. They've come, Joshua and Caleb, they've come, and he says, You know the word that the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh. I was 40 when Moses sent the servant of the Lord to Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land and brought back a word to him. It was in my heart. But my brethren who went up within me, who went up with me, made the heart of the people, the people melt. When they saw the giants, man, their heart just melted. They just lost all faith. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely this land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever. Because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. So 45 years have passed. Now Joshua and Caleb, they're 85 years old, and they're finally about to step over into it. How many of y'all know that this is a long game? It's a long man's game. And I think a lot of times people get saved, and they get born again, and they expect things to radically turn around in 12 months. You know, God said you speak to a mountain, and it will move. I mean, I know it takes a long time for mountains to move. You go drive through Colorado, and it, for them to build a road through the Rockies, it didn't happen in one afternoon. I mean, they had to blow some stuff up. They had to truck it out and blow some more stuff up and truck it out and blow some more stuff up and truck it out. But eventually, how I many of y'all know we all drive on it? Eventually, we all, we all get through. Now there is a way through it. So there is some mountains. It takes a while. So 45 years later, he says... The Lord's kept me 
45 years since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. I love this. And yet I'm as strong this day as on the day Moses sent me. Come on, how many of y'all want that to be your testimony? I'm as strong today as I ever was. Now is my strength for war. Come on, make me want to throw my iPad, but it costs too much. I can't break it. He said, man, I'm ready for war at 85. For going out, for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you have heard in that day now how Anakim were there. And that just means giants. How many of y'all know if you watch Star Wars now, you know they get all their names. The Anakins and all that. All that stuff comes out of the Bible. It's kind of fascinating. Anyway, side note. That the cities, they were great and fortified. And it may be that the Lord will be with me and I will, sh- I will be able to drive them out as the Lord has said. So at 85, he said, baby, I'm ready. Give me this mountain. And what I want to talk to you just the next few moments is uh, there's a tendency to lose that spirit of give me this mountain. That time can pass on and things can, disappointment and things can happen and we kind of lose that spirit of Joshua and Caleb that just says, give me this mountain. So I want to look in Mark chapter 16, and this is kind of where we'll spend the rest of our time, the the last few minutes that I have you. In Mark chapter 16, Jesus says something really interesting. And he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. In other words, these signs are not going to follow every person that calls themselves a Christian. These signs follow believers. These signs... Let other people know that change is possible. These signs, if you've ever seen an airplane that has the smoke that comes out of it, that there's something that's following that you can look at and you say, an airplane's been here. I mean, y'all know that people should look at us and say, a believer's been here. That right there is a believer. Well, how do we know what a believer is? Well, Jesus said he just gave five different things here about the signs of a believer. If I was Jesus, I wouldn't have picked any of these. How many of y'all glad I'm not Jesus? If I was Jesus, I would say, These signs follow them that believe. The lame shall walk. The blind shall see. The dead shall be raised. The lost should be found. All those sound really great, right? I mean, for our pastor to preach, those are really easy. You want to know what's not so easy to preach? Take up snakes. I'm going to have a conversation with Jesus about that. So, you know, you made that statement, take up snakes. We had a whole group of people that started bringing snakes to church. Messed things up for everybody. I mean, it got weird. They got bit in the face. Some died. Like, when you said take up snakes is what believers do, man, Jesus, you could have worded that a lot of ways. Drink deadly poison. Oh, Lord Jesus. Why did you say that? You got Jim Jones telling people to drink red Kool-Aid. Like, come on, you could have said anything for a believer except that. I mean, come on, come up with better wording. Say the, the lost are found or something. But there's a lot in there. How many of you know Jesus doesn't mess up his words? He knew exactly what he was saying. So these few things that he said, the first one is, is cast out devils. How many of you know that would have not been my first one? But he said, these signs follow the believer. And, and, and I don't know, I remember, how many of y'all remember when you learned how to write a check? Some of y'all don't even know what a check is. You're like, a check? What's a check? I get direct deposit or write, you know, do y'all do tap? You know, you just tap now. You don't even got to write a check. But I remember it was a big deal whenever I got a checkbook. I remember practicing my signature. Right, because I wanted it to be right. You know, I wanted a cool signature. I remember being in class and, and t- writing, practicing my signature. I remember writing my first check. And how many of y'all know you got to sign the bottom of the check? And that signature there authenticates the check. If you can write whatever you want in there, if the signature's right there, it's not valid. How many of y'all remember cashing a check? Again, I know some of you young people have no idea what it's like to go to, Wal- to, go to Walmart or Kroger and go up to the service desk 
and cash that paycheck, baby. Sign the back of that, sign the back of that from El Chico's, my weighted tables. Two dollars and thirteen cents gonna go cash that forty dollar check, right? You sign the back of that check. But but what so what I want you to know is this God has a signature too. And God says, my signature follows the believer. That my signature authenticates the life of a believer. And that if people will step out and be a believer, I'll sign that check. I'll, there'll be my sign or signature. How many of you know the, the root word of signature is sign? There are certain signs that follow the believer. God's signature follows the believer. The first thing he says is that he says he'll cast out devils. Now, that doesn't mean that we go looking for devils, but that does mean we have power against them. And all that means is, is that a believer is not always on the, the defensive. How many of y'all know believers are on the offensive? A believer knows that I can resist the devil and he will flee from me. A believer knows that there is a name that's above every other name. And at the name of that... Demons flee. At that name, knees bow. That there is a name that's above every other name. And believers don't just allow things to happen to them all the time. At some point, and you've seen these shirts, there is a, there's a new saying here that says, Not today, Satan. How many of y'all heard that before? Come on, that's the words of a believer right there. The believer says, not today, Satan. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for this mountain, it's going to move. As for this situation, it's going to change. Come on, a believer is somebody that knows how to resist and say, you know what? I'm not going to allow this to contaminate or pollute. This temptation, I'm not going to struggle with this for the rest of my life. I, I'm going to learn how to resist that. Well, how many of y'all know there's a lot of Christians that just live with, they just live their life with que sera, sera. This is, this is the, the hand I've been dealt, and this is the way it'll always be. But how many of y'all know Joshua and Caleb, they just had a different spirit? David stood up and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the covenant of our God? He just had a different spirit. And I, I believe in that the church, how many of y'all know the American church, we need, we, need, we need the church to wake up and not just be good good moral Christians, certainly we do, but we need the church to wake up and actually be a believer and allow God's signature to come behind them and authenticate their, their, their walking with the Lord. The second thing he says is that not only that, he says that they'll speak with new tongues. Now, this is not just tongues like the way we think of tongues. How many of y'all know a believer has a new language? The moment you become a believer and, 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 and not just like, well, I just want to do a good moral duty and go to church. Believers sound different than unbelievers. Believers understand, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast to the sea. Believe in the heart, the way those things he says come to pass. Man, he can't whatever he says. That, that this mountain, it seems immovable. But baby, I can speak to that mountain and it will move. So believers know how to get their mouth moving the right direction with their faith, but also with their love. They learn that I can't always return evil for evil and railing for railing. At some point, I got to tame the tongue, not just be negative Nancy like my crazy aunt. I'm going to have to be the one person in the family that has the mouth of a believer. Jesus said, hey, 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 if anybody, if anybody will ask, ask and believe when they ask, whatever they ask for, I'll give them. How many of y'all know a believer is a person of prayer that believes like I can pray for somebody in Africa and it changes things. I can pray for my kids that I haven't even had yet and it changes things. I can pray for my kids to pick the right college and they're only six years old. Come on, believers understand that there's a new vocabulary, there's a new language, there's a new sound. Give me this mountain. And the sound that came, comes out of a believer, it's just different than the sound that comes out of other people. That believers, that they recognize, man, I can resist the devil. He'll flee from me. I can pray. I can pray. Can these bones live? Come on, a believer is somebody says, I prophesied to those bones. And there started a rattling. And then this bone came to that bone. And skin came up over them. And what was dead became an army. Why? Because I'm a believer. And God said prophesy, so when I prophesied something, there was a rattling. There was a change. 
And then he says, the, 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 the weird one is, is take up snakes. And the reason he says take up snakes is it's not that he wants us to go get a bunch of rattlesnakes. Everybody say, amen. <laughs> Aren't you glad that's not what he meant? But how many of y'all know that the idea of picking up a snake makes most people skin crawl? If I threw you a snake, you wouldn't catch it. Right? You would move. Right? You would move and call Morris Barton, sue me, because I threw, especially if he was poisonous. But even if I threw you a garter snake, most of you would run and scream. Because the idea of taking up a serpent is totally, but how many of y'all know the Bible has given us a different kind of spirit? And he says it's not a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So whenever he says take up serpents, he's not talking about everybody go grab a snake crazy. No, no, no. He says, but the thing that seems like, like, like you could never do, you could not lay hold on that. He says, no, 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 you can. That, 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 that land that's got giants in it that you think you can't lay hold of and possess, no, 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 you can. That, that giant that's running at you that says that he's going to do this and he's going to do that, no, 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 you can. You can lay hold on eternal life. You can fight the good fight of faith. You, you can possess that thing that he said for you to possess. It's, actually, it's absolutely possible. If you just look at Psalms 91, David just had a little different something. And if you look in Psalms, the 91st, I'm going to read it in New King James. They're going to put it up on the, the screen behind me if you don't have your Bible. And uh, if you don't have a Bible, we'll give you one after church. You can go out back. But it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Let's say that together. Everybody say, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings I take refuge. His truth is my shield and buckler. I'm not afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Only with my eyes will I look and see the reward of the wicked. Because I've made the Lord my refuge, even the most high my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me. No plague shall come near my dwelling. Come on. He gives his angels charge over me. Come on, a believer is aware of angelic activity. A believer realizes I am not alone. That there's angels in this room. I've got supernatural angels watching over my kids, watching over my future. Come on, and my angels aren't just leaning on the back wall. Like they're on assignment, right? Next part. They keep you in your way. In their hands, they bear you up. Come on, allow the imagination to move over to the believing department. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the what? The young lion and the what? What are you going to do to him? You better believe it. Trample him underfoot. Because I've set my love upon him, he delivers me. He sets me on high because I know his name. And whenever I call upon him, he answers me. He's with me in trouble. He delivers me. He honors me. And with long life, he satisfies me. And he shows me his salvation. Come on, a believer is not out dancing with snakes. But they understand that I can trample them. That the enemy does not have a foothold 
in my life. Next one is, is that it's poison. Now, how many of y'all know we don't drink poison? How many of y'all know that'd be weird? In fact, the Bible says, don't tempt or test the Lord thy God. And yet, but, but why, what's the difference between the poison of a snake and then this other poison? Well, how many of y'all know the bite of a snake is very obvious? But how many of y'all know that you can accidentally come in contact with COVID-19? You can accidentally come in contact with any number of pestilence or disease or germ. You could come accidentally. How many of y'all have just ever screwed up before? How many of y'all have ever been texting and driving, run off the road and hit a mailbox? Don't raise your hand. But how many of y'all know some things, some things happen to us and then some things just happen? How many of y'all believe he's big enough in all of it? And, and again, I don't want you to think that believers don't have any problems. No, no, no. And I don't want you to think that these things happen overnight. Joshua and Caleb, he said, for 45 years. 40. Thank you. I love it. I ain't mad at it. I love it. 40 years he waited. So it's not that these things happen. It's not that they don't have any problems. It's not that things come easy. But I'm encouraging you to be a believer. Because the world wants to suck all the believing out of you. The world wants you to, 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 to be an unbeliever. And sometimes even in our own family and in our own churches... There's so many more unbelievers than there are believers. And if you actually try to be a believer, they want to knock you down for being one. They're like, no, 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 stay with us over here and, and, and be in the unbelieving department. Hey, I believe Jesus is happy when he finds faith. Because he says, I'm looking for faith. I'm looking for somebody that will believe. My eyes are going all over the place. I want to show myself strong on behalf of my kids. Like, I'm looking for it. In fact, if you look at Jesus whenever he's walking around on the earth, a man comes up to him, a centurion, a Roman. He's not a Jew. He doesn't know any scriptures. He doesn't know the Torah. He doesn't even know the Ten Commandments. He doesn't know any of that. And yet he comes to Jesus and he says, man, this person in my life is death sick I don't have any answers will you heal them and of course Jesus says absolutely let's go and he says wait 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 Jesus you don't have to come to my house you don't have to come to my house baby I'm just like you I'm a man under authority I'm a soldier I have a commanding officer and when my commanding officer speaks a word to me I have to do it just based on that word so speak the word only, Jesus. I'm not even worthy for you to come to my house. Just speak the word, and I know my servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled. Now, I mean, you know, if Jesus marveled, you know it. Because he don't marvel much. The only time we see him marveling in Scripture was this place right here. And then he marveled at their unbelief. So he marveled at this guy's belief. And he marveled at everybody else's unbelief. Now, what do you want to make Jesus marvel for in your life? Your belief or your unbelief? Because that's the only places where he's marveling. Is either, you're make, either, he's, either he's big in your life or he's not. And Jesus turns around and he marvels and he tells Peter, James, and John, and all the other boys that's been riding with him for the last three years and says, I have not found faith like this in all of Israel. This right here is pretty stinking impressive. Everybody say, I'm a believer. I'll show you this and I'll give you this last one. Because this is where a lot of us lie many times. Is, is we can be strong believers in one area, but kind of weak in another area. How many of y'all know that's okay? You can be strong and like, I believe the Lord is my healer, but really struggle believing that the Lord will be uh, help you and supply all of your needs. You can be strong in an area. The Lord will take care of you in certain areas and really be weak in another area. So I want you to know this is not a, you're not a believer, shame on you. No, no, no. This is a, hey, where you're weak in your believing, go ahead and work on growing in that area. Because you can grow in your belief. How many of y'all know you can be stronger next year than you are this year? And I'll show you this because there's a passage here. And then we'll come back to the last one, and then I'll let y'all go to walk-ons. 
Don't get too excited now. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verse number 35. While he was speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house. And they said, your daughter is dead. Now, up until this point, this man has come to Jesus. And he says, you know, my, my daughter's really sick. Will you come and heal her? And Jesus says, okay. They're in the process of going to the person's house. But then news came, said, you know, there's no point in coming up here. The girl's already dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken... He said to the ruler of the synagogue, don't be afraid, only what? And lots of times news comes to us and things come to us that are a disappointment. And immediately the first thing that shows up is fear. And again, that's why Jesus said, hey, you can lay hold and, and take up serpents because uh, the, the thing that's, that, that, that you're afraid of, it, it tries to attach itself to you. And Jesus, he deals with this immediately. He says, no, 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 don't be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and he saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. And Jesus went in and said to him, why did it make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. And again, I want you to see, sometimes when you take the position of a believer, even good meaning people will attack that faith and just say, man, you're kind of crazy uh, for believing that. But how many of y'all know what I love? How many of y'all love about kids? How many of y'all know kids believe anything? I'm, I'm, kids, kids believe anything. It don't matter what it is. You can tell the kids, if you're having an egg hunt, you say, hey, I put, I put $1,000 in that golden egg. They will tear your house up. They will tear that yard up. They'll stay out there for four days looking for that golden egg. <laughs> Why? Because they believe, baby. They believe. They just, they are just believers. Like, no matter what you tell a kid, they are, they, they believe in it. Well, how many of y'all know that, 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 that uh, Jesus said that, they're, like, they're the kingdom of God. That kids understand the kingdom of God. And the disciples would try to say, I'll keep the kids away from Jesus. Jesus don't care about the kids. And he says, hey, knucklehead, those are the actual only people on the planet right now that have a good understanding of the kingdom of God because they believe anything. They're quick to believe. They're, look, they're excited to believe. They're, I mean, I mean you know, everything's up whenever you're a kid. And you wake up, shine up, everything's up. And then as a, as a parent, it's like, sit down, calm down, hush down, pipe down. Come on, it's the opposite between parents and kids. For a kid, everything's up, and we believe everything. And for a parent, it's like, sit down, shut down, blah, 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 blah. I mean, y'all know Jesus wants, wants all of his kids to be like, man anything's possible like I, there's just no telling what God might do today there's just no telling what whoo man we just do anything today I was talking uh, to Matt and we had lunch a couple weeks ago and he's like man I read the whole book of Acts how I many I know you read the whole book of Acts you're like oh man man their shadow touched people and they got healed like it's like man handkerchiefs were getting passed out he's like man give me some handkerchiefs like I mean it's just like ah I mean, I know we lose that sometimes in the church. We lose that in Christianity, and we move from being believers to just being churchgoers. But God likes to rattle the bone sometimes and say, hey, hey, I'm looking. I want to show myself strong on behalf of believers. Like, elevate your believing a little bit. Like, like lift up your believing some. And the last passage I'll give you is a, is a man where a lot of us kind of Mark chapter 9, verse 17, it says, One in the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son. He has a mute spirit. It seizes him. It throws him down, and he foams at the mouth, and he gnashes his teeth, and he becomes rigid. You can imagine he's having like a bell's palsy, some type of a seizure. But you'll see here it's actually, it's, it's rooted in the demonic. So he says, so I spoke to your disciples, but they couldn't cast it out. 
And Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and he wallowed, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, he said, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And he's often, he's been thrown into the fire and into the water to destroy him. How many of y'all know this boy going to have quite the testimony? Boy, you talk about a testimony. And I don't know what he looked like after throwing himself in the fire. I don't know what he looked like after throwing himself in the water. But you can imagine after his deliverance. And Jesus said to him, and, and watch, I love this. He says, he's thrown himself in the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, Jesus, have compassion on us and help us. But while, watch, Jesus is going to pass the ball back to him. He passes this into, he throws this to Jesus. says, Jesus, man, if you could do anything, his mother and I would be really appreciative. Please help my kid here. But watch Jesus. Jesus throws the ball back to him. And he says, no, no, no. If you can, what? If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears. And this is where I believe we all need to be at some point. Where we just say, Lord, I believe Help my, what? Unbelief. And all I'm saying is here today, wherever you're at on the believing spectrum, and maybe you're strong in one area and not strong in another area, at least follow the pattern of this man that cries out and just says, Lord, help me in this area. I recognize you said anything's possible to the believer, and I'm weak in this area of my belief. Help my unbelief. And Jesus saw the people, they came running together. He rebuked the unclean spirit and he said to them, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. And the spirit cried out, watch this, convulsed him greatly. In other words, the devil didn't leave without one last little temper tantrum. But how many of y'all know he has to go? He don't have a choice. He don't want to go, but he has to go. And he gives one last little convulse. And he came out of him, and he became as one dead. And many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come out of the house, his disciples asked him privately, watch this. Why couldn't we cast him out? Why couldn't we do it? And how many of y'all know you need a curiosity about your faith? That just says, I recognize it can be different than it is. What's the hang up? There's a hang up here. And how many of y'all know it ain't God? No, no, no. He'll tell you what the hang up is. And he tells him here, he says, this comes out by prayer and fasting. And what I like about that is, is you can grow from a place of unbelief in an area to a place of belief. And Jesus is telling you here, like, hey, 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 you, you're, you're not equipped to this yet. But you can move into that place that you don't have to die an unbeliever. You can grow into being a strong believer in this area. And that's my encouragement to all of you is, hey, 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 if you live in the unbelieving department, be the one person in your family that moves over to the believing department. And if you find yourself falling over into unbelief, read the book of Acts. It'll move you back into the believing department. Read the 91st Psalm out loud and make it personal. Though a thousand fall at my, my, my right hand, a thousand, ten thousand on the other, it won't come near me. God's given you the tools to move you back into that place. And the devil doesn't want you to live there. Why? Because anything's possible to that person. Mountains move. Dead things become armies to the believer. The last thing is, Jesus said, the signature of... Of God is on the person who lays hands on the sick and they recover. And that doesn't just mean you go around laying hands on the sick and then they recover. And it does. But the believer is somebody that's reaching out to others. 
A believer is somebody that's looking for opportunities to demonstrate the love of God and the power of God to other people. And whenever you step out in faith to be a believer in that area, God will meet you there. And, and even Elizabeth, she got up here at the 9 o'clock and she said the Lord's been stirring her and she's on these prayer calls that, that the church needs to rise up in this area. And if you'll step out and be a person that's willing to just say, can I pray for you? You don't have to know all of the fancy church speech. That just an act of obedience of being a believer, God says, Whoo, I'll, co- I'll sign that check, baby. Like, I'll endorse that thing. You can cash that thing. Take that one to the bank because I can do that in your life. But a believer, you got to stretch forth. you got to step out at times and, it's, and stretch out your hand, and he'll meet you right there. Everybody say, I'm a believer. I know you are. And if you're not, you've at least got enough sense to be like that daddy and say, Lord, help my unbelief in this area. Some of you, from a financial standpoint, and maybe not in this room, maybe somebody watching online, so I'm not thinking about anybody in particular, so don't get the gift of suspicion. <laughs> so, but sometimes we, can, we're, we're, we live with unbelievers and it's hard to break out. It's like, well, I've always lived in this type of house, on this type of place. I've never been a homeowner. I've never had a college education. I've never had this. I've never had this. And you can kind of you can kind of live in that place. But how I many of y'all know God wants you to break out? God will help you break out. Are there certain things that can run in the genealogy of your family from a health standpoint? You know, I have to get colonoscopies every five years. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> Just... It's amazing. I mean, you get to drink this delicious cocktail and live in the restroom for like 12 hours. Ooh, it's just like, man, best time of my life. And then you get to go. I won't tell you what the rest of it is, but, man, they really check you out really, really great. Reason being, I started doing this whenever I was 30, is because in the history of my family, there's a lot of a particular cancer and all this type of stuff. So I do my due diligence and get checked out. Well, how many of y'all know that can, that can really mess with your belief? A lot of little swirling birds flying around in your head. And if you aren't careful, they'll make a nest. Now, how many of y'all know just because birds fly over your head don't mean you got to let them make a nest? You can say, shoe fly, like, shoe fly. Like, like, I can't control the thought from coming, but I can keep it from making a nest. And so I, have, you know, I do what I can do in the physical standpoint. I do everything I know to do. And we talked a little bit about that last week. you got to do everything you know to do physically. But at the end of the day, you need to switch from being an unbeliever over into a believer. And have more belief in Jehovah Rapha, your healer, the great physician, than just... Uh, the other side, although we respect, and I wouldn't go to the doctor if I didn't. So that there, there's the working of both of it. But I would just want you to say, listen, if you're in a situation, you're like, man, I just need help in my unbelief. Well, then join the club and, 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 and see that Jesus wants to work in your life. That the, He needs the church to not just be church goers, but he wants there to be evidence that a believer has been here. That whenever you fly across the horizon of your life and family and business, there's the evidence of a believer there. That, that his signature is on your life. And if you get around people that, that have good results with God, you want to know why? It's not because they're pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, or super duper prayer warriors. It's because they're believers. It's because they, they're constantly moving and trying to live in that place that just says, man, anything's possible to a believer. And if that's not you, then that can't be you, and you just keep working on it being you and uh, God's faith. Well, let me pray for you this morning. God, we thank you for your house. God, we thank you for the entrance of your word, giving light and understanding. God, we thank you that your word is the foundation of our life. When we build our house upon your word, man, things change. Not just for us, but for those around us. That Joshua and Caleb, the choice that they made, it affected the generations that came after them. Then instead of the generations of the people after them living and dying in the wilderness, they moved into the promised land 
because of the choice that they made. God, that we recognize that the life that we choose to live, it doesn't just affect our own life, but it affects those that come after us, that those that live around us, the people that watch us, that the life of faith, that you show in yourself strong in the life of a believer, that it permeates every part, that that's where change comes, that unbelievers become believers when they come in contact with a believer. God, we recognize that, that all of us have come into contact with Jesus through the obedience of somebody else, that somebody told us, somebody invited us, somebody stepped out, somebody stretched forth their hand and brought the healing word of the gospel to us. And God, you require us to do that. God, we ask that you, re you return childlike faith to us that as we grow old we grow cynical at times but at 85 Joshua and Caleb said give me this mountain I'm ready for war God that no matter how young we are no matter how old we are that we don't lose that spirit of if God is for us it don't matter who's against us Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. God, that we live and die as believers. That even in death, we win. That even in death, that with you we conquer all. Death, hell, and the grave, we conquer all. You took the keys to all of it. And that with you, the greater one lives in us. Come on, if you're here and you just say in any area, I don't care what area it is, I'm not going to embarrass you or call you out or whatever, but I do want you, if you're here and you just know, you just say, man, there's, there's at least one area where I need to say, I need, I need to cry out to the Lord and just say, Lord, help my unbelief. I don't want to die without growing in this area because I know it's available, it's possible. Help my unbelief. If you're here and you're, you say, Lord, I need help in an area. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right where you are and just say, hey, man. Come on, most of us can find ourselves there at some point. God, we thank you that we're, man, we want to be believers. And we are believers as far as we know. So, God, we ask you to increase our knowledge, increase our understanding, increase our revelation. If you're here and you're not a believer in, in the cross, if you're, say, if you're here and you say, man, I showed up at church today, I've been in church a long time, I've never been to church, and you, you don't feel like you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, that is step one, is believing in the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. If you're here, you feel far from God. If you're here, you feel like you don't know God. You don't have a relationship with God. If you're here, you don't feel like heaven is your home. If your heart stopped beating today, you said, I don't know if I have eternal life. I don't know if I, if, if I would go up or if I would go down. I don't know if, if, if I have eternal life. Jesus said, you can know you have eternal life. You can know. You don't have to guess. You don't have to wonder. And you don't have to think, well, I, I'm a pretty good person or I went to church. That has nothing to do with it. Jesus Christ and the cross is the only way you can have eternal life. And if you've never said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, I need a Savior. If you've never made him your Savior, then please don't leave without doing that. If you're here and you say, I don't know if Jesus is my Lord, I'm asking you to raise your hand. All right, and look, as I look across, make sure. I want Anybody else? You say, man, I don't know if I have eternal life. Listen, the minute your heart stops beating, you want to have confidence you want to have confidence that the same angels that are around you every day, that they're going to usher you into the presence of God. You want that confidence, and you can have it. You don't have to wonder. You can know you have eternal life. If you, if you raise your hand, I want you to stand up right where you are. Just go ahead and stand up right where you are. And I'm going to ask everybody else to stand up right where they are. Just everybody stand up. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, I confess you are the strength of my life. You are the Lord of all. I am a believer. I'm not a doubter. I confess the Lord is the strength of my life. He came. He lived. He died. 
He arose for me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. And I am a believer. Greater is He that's in me than he that is in the world. I am more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, last thing I'll tell you, we have prayer counselors down here at the front. If you need prayer for anything else or if you're like, man, I would need somebody to agree with me. The Bible says that one can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. In other words, whenever you get together and pray with other people, the prayer of agreement is incredibly powerful. So if you need prayer, somebody to agree with you about your marriage, your finances, your home, anything like that, then uh, make your way down to the front. The rest of you, God bless you. Let me bless you before you leave. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and give you peace. May the Lord use you this week. Be a believer in front of people. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are dismissed.